Hey Singapore, you're watching SG Sports Uncut episode 10. I'm your host, Raj Kumar, and Uncut is the show that brings you closer to our Team Singapore athletes and officials. On today's show, we are talking about our Singapore Slingers, the Republic's only professional basketball outfit. Last season, the team went all the way to the finals of the ASEAN Basketball League and they finished in second place. This time round, after eight games in the regular season, the team are in seventh position as they've only won three games. So can the Slingers rediscover their winning ways and go all the way to the finals once again? Let's find out in this discussion with our studio guests. Hey guys, welcome to SG Sports Uncut episode 10. Today we're talking about the Singapore Slingers. Head coach Niu Peng Siang, we'll start with you. Um, the Slingers have played eight games so far in the 2020 season. You're in seventh position in the table standings. Uh, how would you sum up the overall team performance so far, Coach Neil? Well, basically, you know, uh, at, the, at the moment, we are in the seventh. Because sport sort of, uh, you know, there's up and, up and down and good and bad. But uh, I think for us, we got still 18 games to go. Mm. It's still early. So, uh, I'm, although I'm not really happy with the three, three and five situation, but you know we got a lot of things to work on it, and uh, especially on both end, offensive and defensive end. That's right. So it's uh, three wins, five losses. Now back in December, when the season got underway for you guys, I mean the Slingers sort of started the season <coughs> yep. a few weeks later than the rest because of the Sea yeah. Games. Yes. Did you sort of envision that almost at the one third mark of the campaign, the team would have only won three games? Yeah, we expect that because our expectation, my expectation, because uh, a lot of uh, uh, disruption during our preseason as well, because you know, still, C game is priority on that, and uh, yeah. when we, when we get everybody back on, uh, after the C game, eh, basically the preparation is not there, so you know, we expect that. Mm. Mm. Okay, uh, let's talk to Anthony McLean, hey, of course, uh, nickname. Biggie McLean, yeah. uh, it's your first season with the Singapore Slingers. How would you sum up the team's performance so far? Two months of action. Uh, me personally, I would say the same thing that Coach Neil said. Uh, I feel like we're in the, we're in every game. You know, we don't just get get killed. I feel like we're in every game. We're up in every game. We just something just happens where we just you know lose track for some reason. So, but um, I think I think so for the most part we've been doing good. You know, everybody's been playing hard. We just need to get over the hump. Yeah, you know, that's 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 what I would say. Okay. Uh, yesterday, you faced the league leaders, Mono Vampire, at the OCBC Arena, which is our home ground. You scored 11 points, had 23 rebounds. Unfortunately, the team lost by just two points. It's final score, 67-65. Can you take us through your performance yesterday? Um, for me, it was pretty simple. You know, I struggled a little bit offensively. So I felt like um, just because I wasn't out there offensively, I, I didn't even do as much as I could, you know, in other facets of the game as far as like rebounding and blocking shots. So that was that was my main objective to grab every rebound I can or to block as many shots as possible. Okay. If I wasn't able to do on the other end. Biggie of course plays uh, in center, you know, he's two point one four meters tall. Uh, on his left is Desmond O. Desmond plays as a guard. Let's hear from you and the close defeat to the Thai club. Uh, you know, over the weekend you featured for less than five minutes in the game, but you still scored four points. What do you reckon went wrong with your team strategy against your visiting opponents? Actually, I feel that uh, we didn't push the ball up fast enough. Um, we didn't run the play well. Mm. Uh, we have too much individual at, at some times. Um, actually, I think that we, we did pretty well on our defense. Mm. It's just uh, at some point that we, uh, we messed up a little bit. Yeah, that's that's what I think about the last the last game, man. Like, okay, okay. So the game against Mono Vampire was on the back of two straight wins. So Desmond, how costly was this latest defeat, especially in front of the home crowd? I believe there was maybe thousand two, thousand five hundred fans. So it's very very costly. Um, actually, we we always, always thought that we can we can win in our home court because we need to protect our home court. Yeah. Um, it's always feel bad to, to lose in front of our uh, fans um, because uh, they, are, they keep cheering so hard for us and we, and we didn't perform to our standard. Yeah, and losing by just two points. Yes. One, one. Coach Neil, let's go back to a few months ago, uh, back to October. Get your thoughts on pre-season preparations. You signed three foreign imports, namely Anthony McLean, uh, Marcus Elliott and uh, <coughs> Xavier Alexander. Let's uh, talk about 31-year-old McLean. What does he bring to the Slingers from your point of view? 
No, definitely the height and the size, and uh, that's the our advantage on that. And because we need a, a big guy that really can, you know, uh, help to protect our 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 sort of uh, basket. Mm. And uh, obviously, you know, we bound wise, and we need from him. And I think that's why we sign him. Okay, and uh, <coughs> having finished second in last season's campaign, what made you decide to retain the services of Marcus Elliot? Well, I think Bisky experience-wise, because he had played with uh, Hong Kong as well, and he got a championship, and uh, he's one of the scorers. So from there, we think that he basically can fix our team strategy. So that's why we we sign him, and uh, and, and we are we are there. I mean, he's there for us. Okay, Biggie, uh, what is your take on playing alongside Marcus, who's ranked third? in the ASEAN Basketball League's <coughs> all-time scoring list. Oh, it's cool, you know, it's cool. Uh, we get along real well on the court, on and off the court. Um, you know, a, a point guard in the center always should have the best relationship on the team, you know, just as far as, you know, uh, chemistry. But it has been, it's been amazing. So, I mean, we just, we're still growing and we're still getting better. So, it, it's, it'll be fun the rest of the year. Okay. What about your uh, Xavier Alexander, who is also a former MVP in the finals? Uh -huh. How does it feel to be reunited once again with him since having played together a few years ago in uh, Thailand. Uh, it, it feels real good because uh, the way it went the first time we were together, so we was hoping that we could uh, you know, have a repeat of the situation. Repeat so, the magic. Yeah, so that, that's, what, that's what we were excited about. Okay, Desmond, you played alongside uh, Xavier last season as the team went all the way to the ABL finals. Uh, so in your opinion, what does he bring to the Singapore franchise? The energy, the passion to win and uh, uh, he's the, the, he never give up attitude. Mm. Yeah, that's what that's why we love him so much. Yeah. Okay. And um, and while on the note of last season, it was I believe your third uh, your third time in the grand finals. Yeah. Third time in the grand finals in four seasons, but still, the Slingers came up short, lost three two in the best of five games in the final. What did you personally take away from last season? Actually, I think it's our mental toughness and. Um, the ability to listen to coach message while um, we are playing the games. Mm. So I think this is the message that I, I need to um, take, take it from the last um, ABL finals. Okay. Coach, you know, I think we touched on this. I believe for pre-season it wasn't easy getting <coughs> the entire squad together yeah. as most of the players were part of Singapore's national team which was also prepping for the SEA Games yeah. in December. So effectively, how how many preseason games did you have for the Slingers as a whole? Well, we got two preseason tournament or games in uh, Bangkok. So, but uh, so like we don't have everybody there, so okay. we struggle as well because you know uh, a lot of part timer with us and uh, students, so they can't really train in the morning and sometimes at night as well. Mm. So because of the study and their school competition, so really affect us on that preparation. Okay. Do you reckon your other uh, ABL opponents face similar issues or did they have players who were not involved in the SEA Games and were only solely focused <coughs> on prepping for uh, the ABL season? I think they are... I don't see that a big part for them because uh, they, some of the country actually they have a couple of players involved in the C game but you know they are sort of, most of them are full time players so mm. preparation a, a minor adjustment will do but for us it's because of our students so they need mm. to go to school so we a bit struggle on that but you know we get used to all this uh, environment. And somehow the bulk of your team are part of the national team. Yep, yeah exactly. Bulk, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Alright then let's touch on the season opening match for the Slingers. It was against the San Miguel uh, a lot Filipinas yes. uh, in Manila. Your team was up 65-55 in the fourth quarter. Biggie, mm. uh, you personally chipped in with 25 points for the whole game, uh -huh. but your opponents had one player in the form of Khalif Wyatt, uh -huh. who drilled five three-pointers in that final quarter alone. Do you still remember that season opener against yeah. San Miguel? Yeah, yeah, I sure, for sure remember the season opener. You know, it was the first game of the season. You know, you got you're anxious, you got you got butterflies, and you. After watching everybody play for weeks, you know, you finally get a chance to play. So, of course, I remember, yeah, I remember the first game like it was yesterday. Okay, but you remember this uh, Khalif's uh, performance? Yeah, yeah, five three-pointers, four-quarter? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. He, yeah, one, of the, one of those days where he was just hot. 
Yeah. You know, it just got hot and the room was like the ocean. Okay. You know, but yeah, I definitely remember it. Definitely. Yeah. Despite a strong performance, the Stingers lost 90-83. Were they just too strong for uh, you guys in the end? Nah, nah, I wouldn't say that. You know, mishaps, you know, uh, I would say we beat ourselves more than I would say beat us. I say we beat ourselves. Uh, you know, we just can't let it continue to happen. Yeah. You know, because I know and whether you go to any of our games, you know, we were up at a certain point in the fourth quarter mm. where we have a mishap and we beat ourselves. So I wouldn't say nobody's, nobody's strong for anybody in this league because on any given night you can be beat. Okay. You know, from the eighth place team to the first place team. So right. that's what I would say now, I wouldn't be strong. Okay. Desmond, let's move on to game two. And it was against the Macau Wolf Warriors. The Slingers triumphed 76-72 in front of the home crowd at OCBC Arena. So how would you assess the team performance? I think that day that we come out really uh, uh, a lot of energy. Uh, we really uh, run the play and uh, we did well uh, when we when we really push the ball up. Mm. So I think a lot of our, a lot of our points come from our uh, fast break. Okay. So I think that's the the main point that we win the game on that day. Okay. Any surprise to see the big man in the center next to you, as in Biggie, scoring 19 points? Well, Marcus, who's a shooting guard, had 15. Uh, actually, scoring, it doesn't matter who, who, who? scored the most. Whoever is, who is, whoever is it, hot hand, yeah. give the ball to him. He will yeah. score, score the point for the team. Okay, okay. Uh, Coach Neil, so yeah. that's one win, one loss before the New Year break. Yep. Game 3 was on the 4th of January, 2020. Uh, your boys went up against Taipei, Fubon Braves. What yep. was your strategy going into, against uh, the Braves in Taiwan? Well, basically, you know, uh, my strategy is, you know, taking the high uh, advantage because of Biggie, you know, because, you know, it's hard to scout them because they keep on changing their imports and uh, end up, you know, uh, we sort of like, okay, think that, okay, Biggie is our most advantage because of the height. Mm. So we try to, you know, pass him the ball most of the time and he get ourselves like, you know, under the basket. So that's our main main strategy, and uh, obviously defensive, we did really like you know we talk about team how we going to ro rotate on defense and that. Okay, what did you tell your team when they were down at halftime, 44-33? So they were trailing 11 points, but they came out fighting to take the lead at the end of the third period at 61-60. Yeah, I mean it's nothing much. It's basically you know it's just some encouragement and, and uh, basically and. You have to believe that okay, we can do it as a team, you know, and uh, obviously the effort and the energy need to be there. So uh, it's all about players coming out and give us all that. Okay, a quick word on a Singaporean Leon Quack's season high performance of 18 points and three triples against the Braves. Yep. Well, I mean, it's, uh, he, during the practice, you know, he shot a lot of threes, and uh, obviously, like I say. Uh, Desmond did mention about he said during the game whichever is hot hands you know mm. you just want to pass the ball to him and he keep on scoring for the team and you know we we need to win so you know if he get ourselves like you know hot hands not just Leon everybody we we'll just go for it right uh, Biggie McLean yes sir despite another strong comeback performance it still proved a bridge too far as the Slingers were outgunned 83 77. Uh, you had a double double with 16 points, 10 rebounds. Was this defeat one that the team could have prevented? Yes, yes, yes. I feel like we could have prevented it. Yeah, the same thing goes back to previous. You know, uh, we were we were down a lot. We had a lead, and you know, we have a couple of mishaps, and yeah. you know, uh, we in would, the fourth quarter especially. Yeah, we would do something that we couldn't really come back from. You okay. know, but uh, I say, you know, we we could prevent ourselves from from those situations. Well, in less than 24 hours after that game, the Slingers faced off against the Formosa Dreamers and you were leading by 8 points in the third quarter. Uh -huh. But yet again, the team's offense just couldn't get the final job done. Yeah, uh -huh. it's like a repeating story, a revolving door. Uh, you know, something that we just got to, you know, I feel like it could be mental. It could be something mental, but uh, you know, we're always there. You know, we're always there. I don't know what it is, you know, we're going to figure it out. but. Uh, I would rather happen now than happen later. Happen now than happen later. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. Desmond, the Slingers succumbed to the second straight defeat as the score was 88-77. We also saw a former Slingers player in the form of uh, Jaron Young. Jaron Young. Yes. He came back to haunt the Slingers when he scored 21 points, 9 rebounds for the Dreamers, 
did you expect uh, Jaron to deliver a stellar performance? Um, we are, I expect that, that he will come out to prove something, but I think that he he really come out to do something for the team, for his team yeah. to prove that he's able to do something. Uh, that's that's how I feel. Okay. On a consolation note, we did see our own Delvin Go uh, creating his best performance of the season with 17 points, 7 rebounds. Your thoughts on Delvin's game against the Dreamers? Actually, I, I think that he stepped up big time this season, yeah, especially on the, the rebound side. Yeah. Um, and he's scoring. Um, this, this season, he really put in a lot of effort and uh, I think that we really need to give some credit to him this season. Okay. Uh, Coach Neo, yeah. now for the remaining five games involving the Slingers, I'll be of a couple of games. I'll be speaking to three more players in the second half of the show yeah. uh, to get their thoughts. So for now, to get the closing comments uh, from you, with two thirds of the season still remaining, what is your main aim for this season? Well, definitely step by step. You know, still aiming for playoff. Then from there, you know, you get yourself uh, uh, to the semi and the finals. That's our aim, and and uh, definitely uh, everybody come have to come to the same page. That's right, yeah, because 10 season, we have not won yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Liverpool not winning the, the, season, the EPL in 20, yeah. you know, since 1990. Which elements do you feel that you'll still need to work on the team in terms of strategy as you try to make the playoffs first? I think, uh, in defensively, basically I still believe we need to work on our on ball and a couple of zone defence and to get ourselves to, to be to get ourselves into the game as well mm. and uh, offensively we need to be more disciplined to execute our offence. Okay, uh, Biggie McLean, what is your personal target that you set for yourself and for the Slingers? Uh, you know, I, I, I would have to say just um, you know, me getting better every day and trying to be the best me I can be and just focus on making it to the playoffs and going from there because you can't do anything unless you don't make the playoffs. So yeah. try to get the playoffs first and then take it step by step and day by day. Game by game. As a player who's featured in several professional leagues around the world, what is your advice to any Singaporean who's watching and thinking of playing for the Slingers? Uh, believe in yourself. You know, have faith. Believe in yourself. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, Desmond did it. You know, so you could do it. You know, so it, it can happen, but you got to believe in yourself and you know, work hard at doing it. Okay. Desmond, oh, a seasoned campaigner with the Slingers. Still no championship ring to show for. Is this season already over for the Slingers after five losses in eight games? No, it's still not over yet. Yeah. We still have eight, 17 games to go. Mm. And if we keep continuing to do bad, to do well, these 17 games, can, anything can happen. So, um, I, it's not over yet. Okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what is your, already, right what is your message for the fans to come down to the OCBC arena and support you guys in action? Do come down to support the Singapore Slingers. Your, your boys will give us a little bit more boost to fight for the team and your support is really very important for the Singapore Slingers. Alright, on that note, thank you very much. Anthony McLean, Desmond O, Coach Neo Beng Siang. Thank you. We wish the team, the Singapore Slingers, the very best in your quest to try and win the very first ABL Championship in the 10th season. So, all the best and uh, we hope to see you in the Grand Finals once again. Thank you for joining us on SG Sports Uncut. Thank, thank you, you very thank much. You, thank, thank you. you. Thank you.